Kia ora folks, I want to talk to you a little bit about social competence uh, and uh, social competence is really the ability to um, get along with people and I think as teachers we can develop that in our, in our students and particularly for um, uh, teenagers because teenagers are, are, you know, their brains as we know are being rewired and um, they, they look to us as role models to be calm, to be purposeful, um, you know, to, 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 to have rules in the classroom. So I've, I've chosen five, five things um, to, for teachers to develop this. And the, the first one, I suppose, is classroom setting. I always look at, I, when I go into and I observe classrooms, I always, I always check out what it looks like. You know how are the how are the groups, you know, organised. How are the you know are, are the seats arranged? You know, facing all the front, or are the seats in, in in groups? And I think probably, you know, groups of four to five students working as teams can be very very effective. It just depends on whether you want a transmission approach to your teaching and you want to be you know standing at the front and them all looking. Or do you want it more of a collaborative learning environment where you're wanting the purpose of it is that you want students to work in teams or in groups? Okay, so you know you have to make some decisions about that. But the classroom setting is critical to get right because you want it calm, and um, you know even the right colour in the room can make a difference to learning. You know, making sure that the room is warm for students so they feel comfortable in it, and you know, in temperature making sure there's windows open for some air. All those sorts of things can make a real difference to the way um, you know, students get along with others. So creating that, taking the time to create that is important. The second thing is know your learners. So it's all about relationships really. So and if you know the names of students and you know how to pronounce them and you get, it, you get to know students, you, you um, know about their personal interests, you know what they do out of school, you know, you get an idea of, you know, what sports team they're, they're, they're playing and all those sorts of things you can build up over the months when you, you get to know students. So knowing their name is, a, is, is essential because if, if you know their name, you have less and less um, uh, disruption because you can talk to them about whatever it is. You can say, oh, hey, uh, Simon, you know, what's happening here? So that that's a that's that, that's important okay um these are all these are all um preventative strategies you know rather than having disruptive behavior you can actually prevent that happening and that this is the these are the most important things it's preventative strategies that are crucial rather than i mean you can have corrective strategies but it's preventative strategies that are the key and that's what i'm discussing here the third thing is lesson planning. Planning the lesson is, is, is critical in that you can, um, you know the purpose of the lesson. You know, you know what your aim is. And even having it written up on the, on the whiteboard can be, can be clear for the students. They know too what the purpose of the lesson is, that you know in your head where you're going, what you're wanting the students to learn about. Um, getting the gear right you know rather than running off and finding the scissors you know in the lesson you're far better off to spend you know the time before the lesson and have every, all the gear in front of you so you're ready to go so you're really with the students you're not searching for something or being taken away from the learning environment you're right there with the students that's really important and you're keeping your eye on the students you ne your eyes never never leaves them you're always watching the students the fourth thing is students need to learn how to collaborate. It's not just an automatic thing. Just getting kids into groups doesn't, they don't know um, how to do it. So asking them to be, to go into roles, so knowing what, what roles they need in the, in, the, in the task that they're doing. Maybe they have certain specific responsibilities in, their, in the activity that they need to be involved in. So all those things that they can talk about, maybe there are rules about how they talk to one another. So you can set those rules out and you can negotiate those rules with the students about how they want to operate like that. So learning to collaborate is crucial for social competence.
because I mean, how, how, how else will they learn how to develop their social competence without knowing those strategies or those mechanisms to help them learn, help, help them learn in groups? And the final one, the fifth point, is high expectations. Having high expectations for all our learners. So um, the importance of valuing every learner in the class, what culture they come from, um, what, what prior knowledge they, they bring to the class, um, and acknowledging them as a learner is so important. So, and, and, and lifting up those expectations, ensuring that everyone brings information and knowledge to the learning environment is really crucial. So you, 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 you pull them up as a teacher. You, you tell them, oh, no, no, this is how we operate now. I want respect from everyone. And so it becomes a very purposeful learning um, uh, 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 um, activity in the, in the classroom setting. So I, I hope those five points uh, help you. Two people that you could certainly uh, YouTube is Bill Rogers, who does a lot of does some wonderful um, videos on uh, preventative and corrective um, um, classroom behaviour, and there's also John Marsden's YouTube clip on how he has designed his school, so how he builds positive learning and positive learning behaviour.